I'm so glad to have the uh, opportunity to talk about this topic, uh, uh, meta-analysis for zero cases studies. Okay. Okay. First, what is zero cases studies? We can basically we can divide it as a single arm zero uh, studies and a double arm zero studies. For single arm zero studies, uh, zero cases only happens in one of the arm. And for double zero uh, arm zero cases, uh, zero cases happens in both the intervention and the control arms. Uh, zero cases studies are commonly seen in meta analysis. It is estimated that there are 35 percent of the meta analysis contains studies with zero cases, of which three percent contains studies with uh, double zero studies. And uh, I give the I give an example of how zero cases studies were dealt with in traditional meta analysis. There are four single arm zero cases studies and two double arm zero cases studies. And we can easily find that all of the four single arm zero studies were synthesized in the meta analysis. Where for the two double arm zero studies, they were excluded. Now here comes to comes a question. Is it reasonable to exclude double zero studies in the meta analysis? To address this question, we need to understand whether double zero cases studies are non-informative or not. If they are non-informative, so it will be uh, reasonable to exclude these studies. But what if they're not necessarily non-informative? Is, is it still reasonable to exclude them? Let's find out some evidence. First, uh, Borhi have compared the likelihoods of the double zero studies by modeling them into a Poisson regression model and a conditional binomial model. And uh, they found that for double zero studies, the likelihoods are exactly the same when modeling them into the Poisson regression model and the conditional model. So they conclude that double zero studies contribute no likelihoods and then they are non informative this is the evidence that support zero, uh, double zero studies are non informative. But what if we change another method? For example, the generalized mixed model. We can use a real world data set to test it. Here we have 442 meta analyses with, with at least one study with no cases in both sums. So, what we need to do is to repeat the meta analysis. First, including all double zero studies. Second, excluding double zero studies. So the hypothesis would be that if double zero studies do not contain any information, the, um, the results of including double zero studies should exactly be the same to the results of excluding such studies. Let's see the results. We can find that the, uh, the odds ratio and the p values are totally different by including double zero studies and excluding double zero studies. This tells us that based on generalized linear mixed model, double zero case studies contains information for the statistic inference. And this also suggests that whether double zero studies contains information depends on the methods and the assumption. So this is this suggests that, that uh, uh, there is one important concern for the uh, statisticians about double zero event studies. They argue that double zero studies face a large amount of random error. They suppose a trial with one to one design and the two event risks are 0.005 versus 0.001. And so the true odds ratio is approached five. However, if the sample size is only 100 of each other, then the mostly the observed events in both sounds are zero. They claim that this, this will bias the 
embarrassed the results. To address this question, we can conduct a simulation study. Again, we can use the generalized mixed mix, uh, models to compare the performance of including double zero studies versus excluding double zero studies. And finally, we found that both including double zero studies and excluding double zero studies can achieve almost embarrassed estimation when there is, uh, when the between study variance is not substantial. These results at least suggest that uh, dub, uh, double zero cases studies, the random errors from double zero cases studies can be addressed in meta-analysis and it, it is no longer the, a concern. In contrast, I think we should uh, concern the problem by treating double zero studies as non-informative because double zero studies may caused by non-reporting bugs. Say the stakeholders tend to not report the adverse events. If we treat double zero studies as non-informative, this will dismiss the review authors to make efforts to get the true data and therefore it brings the systematic errors. Here is um, our investigation with uh, our recent investigation, we found that the majority, almost 18% of the systematic review authors simply treat studies with no events as non-informative and excluded them from the meta-analysis. And even they do not discuss the potential uh, impact on the results. This is of somewhat serious. Based on this evidence, we can have two conclusions. First, studies with no cases are not necessarily non-informative. This depends on the measures and the assumptions. And second, simply treating studies with no cases as non-informative is unreasonable. And uh, maybe things need to change. Here we, give, here we provide two solutions to deal with this situation. First, we can conduct sensitivity analysis by using at least one method that can uh, make use of the information of double zero studies. And the second one is to measure the potential impact of studies with no cases and the results. For the first solution, uh, the key point is to summarize all of the methods that can be used to deal with double zero studies. To, in order to facilitate um, systematic review authors to uh, make uh, to choose um, to choose an appropriate method, we have proposed a framework which can class uh, divided meta analysis with zero event studies into six subtypes, and uh, uh, under each subtype, we have summarized uh, potential methods that can be used to deal with the zero cases studies. And then uh, systematic review authors can easily find out which type of meta-analysis they are facing and also uh, find out the appropriate methods that can be used to make for use of the information of double zero studies. The second solution, uh, we call it uh, as harm index and the benefit index. Uh, which is the HIPI, the HIPI method. This is a method that uh, similar to the concept of fragile index. We add one, two, three, four events to the double zero studies on the treatment arm or in, uh, on the uh, control arms and to see if these additional events added in the studies can impact, can uh, reverse the direction of the uh, effects. And uh, this is an example of the HIPI method. So the logic behind this method is that if studies with no cases do not impact the results, we can exclude it from the synthesis, just treat it as a rapid synthesis. And if studies with no cases may impact the results, it is not recommended to exclude them from the synthesis. 
We also prepared a, a user-friendly start model for HIP method, and uh, we will release this uh, uh, model recently. And this is all of uh, our uh, thinking about double zero studies in meta-analysis. Thank you for your attention.